All right, real quick, I wanted to show you guys what I talk about a lot in the Friday Night Live q and is about the hydrogen causing pH swings when you're doing water changes and the spikes that it causes and why you're getting these big readings from your pH and why many people will let their water sit and out gas for 24 hours. All right, so real quick here, let's talk about this. I'm gonna show you in the video why pH will spike when you're doing water changes because it'll also read the per hydrogen now this isn't the only way that ph raises there's other ways to do it with mineralization even your air bubbler your air liner raises ph but often this is the culprit to these ph spikes which aren't so bad it's the ammonia spikes that are a problem the pH spikes when you're doing water changes, you'll see where I, I mean, I really loaded in the hydrogen molecules in there. It'll be per hardness and also per hydrogen, but it'll read it up anyways. And this is why I say pH can be a goose chase because if you're not thinking about it fully, it may be hard to really understand what your problems may be with the pH situation. So hopefully this video will help you guys. Plus there's more content on here. Check it out. Run through a few things. Getting ready for the triple crown. Short video for you guys let's jump into it and doing a little top off before triple crown and this is what i'm saying this is what creates high ph Bikes. see all that oxygen all those oxygen molecules in here we get your ph from so this is why i try to stick with small water changes that way this doesn't take over too much and completely outgasses everything and if you do it slower you can see it goes down naturally comes up helps to kill algae and things oxidation yep that's what gives you your ph spikes and the trickling way of filling is always good for when you're filling up slow. I did blast a ton in there, but when you want to go fast, shouldn't do that with babies though. You got to be careful with your tanks. It's really mixing up that biofilm and everything on top, getting it all nice and oxygenated. And the pH is just going pew because all that hydrogen. Now, if you have baby fish in a tank, better to do the slow method than this. This is, could cause problems. Same with uh, Daphnia tanks. You want a slow roll of Daphnia tank. Big old storm heading in too. Look at that, you can see the rain on this side coming in. Sunny over there, water changing. From a garden hose. Having the door open with the barometric pressures and stuff. And all them fancy lateral lines fish have and whatnot. Hopefully that'll help trigger this too. These rice fish love it. Look at them go. Swim, little buddy, swim. Look at them go. Weird that out of all fish, it would be the rice fish because normally we keep them in the slow moving. I can imagine they don't want to do this forever. All the rainbows are like, yeah, whatever. I'm done even. They're cool just hanging out. Everybody else, but the rice fish. I was hoping to have more of this done, but off to the Triple Crown I go. Which is the American Cichlid Association, American Killifish Association, and American Liber Association. And bonus, you get ANGFA, Australia New Guinea Fishes Association. The reason why they call it the Triple Crown is three clubs and plus one. Now it's sunny over here, cloudy over there. Just switched up. Blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. Birds are struggling, trying to go against it. Moving quick, look at it go. Beautiful. So beautiful. Dang, it is bright over there. There it goes. It's a real contrast. Tank, tank test stuff right here. Check out this fish. He had to climb up there. Oh, the right. garden eater. Right. Oh. Yeah. All right, so join us for the next videos that we do on the Triple Crown. We're probably gonna do a couple videos on it. Getting there, I saw a fish room, so we'll probably do a video on that. I got some awesome footage of a lot of beautiful fish there. We'll do a whole compilation of that. Some of the ventures I went on because I got to go to this convention as a spectator not a vendor this time so i actually got to hang out do a lot of cool stuff and wasn't stuck in the vendor room for the whole time so hit that subscribe button if you want to see that stuff coming up hit the like button that would be greatly appreciated leave a comment let me know what you guys think have you guys ever had a problem with ph i personally don't even mess i, I 
pH doesn't bother me so much. I don't really even mess with it. I go off of TDS, the Total Dissolved Solids. Let me know if you ever had an issue with it. Leave a comment. That way other people can hear your experiences because that's what we're here for, to help each other learn in this aquarium hobby because you can do it for hundreds of years, still be learning. And that's what's awesome about this hobby. But anyways, enough rambling. Hit that like button. That would be awesome of you. And I appreciate you all. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.